what I feel about Brian, uh, when I listen to him speak, when I read his words, I think he is some kind of magical amalgam of um, a scientist in the contemporary sense and a poet in the sense of the great poets um, who were the prophets of the past. Thank you. Starting us off. I um, Hello, everybody. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi. Hi, so good to be together. My life has been the process of, of rooting myself in a reality where these tiny little particles came together and brought forth galaxies and then a living planet and ourselves. We have discovered something huge about the universe that was not known to the, to the fundamental geniuses that gave gave birth to the, the great philosophy and, and, and religion all around the planet. They, they, they simply didn't know that the universe as a whole is evolving. It's a change in our understanding that is way beyond Copernicus. Copernicus changed the, the Western world, certainly. And we are dealing with something that is uh, so many times huger. I wanted to also, um, I think, I think you know, so many of us here are are involved in this process of 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 disconnecting ourselves from one particular view of the universe and of life and of humanity, disconnecting ourselves from the modern industrial view, and attempting to root ourselves into the 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 sacred. A development we 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 find all around us. What I mean by rooting myself in this universe, it is, it's it's to recognize that the the universe itself is developing and is expressing an ultimate wisdom. And we so our our challenge is to articulate a really a, an ultimate wisdom and the just to leave you with one example of this. Every second, the sun transforms 4 million tons of itself into light. Everything that has happened in human history happened powered by this sacrifice, a solar sacrifice of, of its body given freely. And by, by participating in that, we have come alive. So that it's a kind of a cosmic generosity that makes things happen. And I think the, the, the big challenge for us now is how do we become the human form of a cosmic generosity? It was something bigger than politics, you know, it, bigger than science as knowledge, and it was a, is a recognition of, of being shaped by the universe, this process uh, that we are in, of identifying the cosmological dimensions of our lives, one of the principal spiritual pathways of the 21st century. That's why the subtitle of the book is Unveiling the Expanding Universe. We, we think of it, like, and scientifically, we think of it as Okay, the galaxies are expanding, you know, when they stop there. No, no, uh, we, our consciousness is expanding and deepening as we come into a greater appreciation of our cosmological dimension. We, we discover that humans are in the process of, of, of developing uh, patterns of action that will determine the planet, the planet's structures for the next million years. Now, now, in other words, we have to become, we have to become sensitive enough to the dynamics in which we find ourselves to make decisions that that are beneficial for the Earth community for a million years. I mean, this isn't something we learned in grade school or high school. Or we didn't, we never thought about that. And the, the industrial society is focused on the next quarter's returns, you know? So we're, it's just, and the, 
the the approach that that um, I'm focused on at working at human energy uh, is this notion of the noosphere uh, from Teilhard de Chardin, the noosphere as a as an interconnected network of thinking taking place around the planet. There has never been anything like this in the history of life, that a, a single planet, I mean, a single species that can think has, is in a certain sense, enveloped the evolutionary process to capture the imagination of the younger generation. There's something more important than, than success in industrial society. What we need is success in a cosmological society. The science is that the universe began with elementary particles, right? And the poetry is that the universe began with a desire. And, 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 then, and then, you know, there'd be arguments back and forth, but we can talk about the expansion of the universe as in a physical dimension of, of the particles moving away from each other. Um, but there's another way to talk about it with a, a, a deep and fantastic desire to give expression to beauty. Now that, that idea is, is not mine by any means. It's, it's, I think it's in, in many ways it would be similar to um, an indigenous sense of the birth of the universe. But in particular, it, it goes from the philosophical point of view, Alfred North Whitehead, right? A wonderful Episcopalian. So Alfred North Whitehead, uh, that was his idea that if you want to know what the mean of the universe is, it is to give birth to beauty. And if you want to know the meaning of the desire within, it's to give birth to beauty and to, and to, and, and to care for those who are uh, desiring the same thing. We're developing what you know, can be called noospheric imagination. And, and another way to say it would be, and this, this is Thomas Berry's phrase, time developmental imagination, that imagination of, of seeing and relating to every entity as a 14 billion year creative expression of the whole. That is, that is where I think we are headed as a, as a species. And so, so many of the difficulties we have right now, like racism and sexism, these are, 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 these are evidence of a, of a very small consciousness if we begin to really feel the magnificence uh, that, that was required to bring forth any entity on our planet, we will have a, a very, very different relationship. The ultimate creativity of the universe, you know, which, which may or may not identify with God. You know, I'm not a theologian, but I, I'm, I'm talking about something divine when I say the ultimate creativity. The ultimate creativity uh, manifests itself through relationship, through relationship. And just to, just to give you a couple images, the early universe, you know, 14 billion years ago, consisted entirely of elementary particles, electrons, protons, neutrons, you know, photons. That was it, that was it. And, and what happened is that the, the electrons and the protons, they started to deepen their relationship and in that process, they gave birth to trillions of galaxies, huge structures. Now, little, these little tiny, tiny particles, simply by getting involved with one another, brought forth galaxies. Why do I repeat myself? Because I can't get over it. It's just so amazing. Now, go ahead, jump ahead. Go to the early Earth. We, life on Earth, for three billion years, was single-celled organisms, single-celled organisms. Three billion years, I mean, they could have gone on forever, but what, did, what happened? They started to re get involved with relationships with each other. That was it. They got involved with each other and they gave birth to whales and oak trees. Now, the, and you think of these little cells, they didn't have any idea about an oak tree, you know? But in the relationship, this, this ultimate creativity comes forth. Now, what needs to be emphasized, and this will be taught in every grade school sometime during the 21st century, 
what what needs to be emphasized go go back to the elementary particles no new elementary particles or anything else came in the power was in the particles and the relationships that's the manifestation of of ultimacy same is true with the cells the, it was just these little cells getting together giving birth to whales so here we are we 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 have we are deepening our relationships around the planet we we have we are connected up in new ways the internet we 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 we, inv we invented poetry poetry is a recent invention but we're in all of these we are deepening and complexifying our relationships and out of those relationships a new earth is coming forth not just with humans a new relationship with any entity is the source of ultimate creativity. I mean, it's, you know, when you start to get a feel for it, it's, it's just so thrilling. And I, that's what I think when, when younger people get a feel for it, you see, they'll, they'll realize, wow. And, and even right now, even right now, if, if, if we were talking to them, and they would have a sense of which relationships they were involved in had the promise of bringing forth this creativity. And, and like as elders, if, if, if we hold that vision for them, they will develop the confidence in their own intuitions as to which relationships really are giving birth to a new era. Here is a miracle that suffices for a lifetime of astonishment and reverence. This lava evolves into the orangutan. That is the creativity that pervaded molten rock was because of the interactions of the elements in the rock that gave birth to life. And, and that process continues with me, with you, with us. At the level of activity, we are this cosmic creativity. Every entity is. At the level of activity, when we become aware of it, when we, we know in our consciousness that that's who we are, that awareness accelerates the process. It doesn't create the fact that we are cosmic creativity. It accelerates our own involvement with it. I feel like something very precious has been um, given to us. It's really beautiful. I thank you so much.